Bengaluru, India's Silicon Valley, and home to most of the biggest software companies in the world. A bustling high-tech city that has grown from 3 million inhabitants to 12 million in a matter of years. According to recent reports, the city faces a zero water day in the not too distant future and may even become uninhabitable. The city has hundreds of lakes, but 90% of them are dangerously polluted with untreated sewage and industrial effluence. Many of them are also on fire. The toxic lather forms when detergent and other chemicals present in domestic sewage mixes with lake water. Bangalore is now exploding because people think it's got a nice climate, there are a lot of opportunities and so on. But water is the most important resource base. If you destroy that, that's the end of your city. And a lot of people who live in those apartment blocks and other small industries around it either do not know or do not care that they are the source of that pollution. In the 1970s, there were still 285 lakes but today, there are just 190-odd lakes, and the large majority of them are dangerously polluted. The city depends on the Calvary River water and groundwater. But the supply from the Calvary is far less than the demand. The city largely depends on groundwater that's being extracted at an exponential rate by private tanker operators. That catchment area is drying up because of you know, soil erosion and deforestation issues. See, earlier, Bangalore had some four, you know, water at 400 feet. Now it has reached 1,000 feet in the in you know, last five years. Such a you know, sharp drop has taken place. Now we will probably reach layers where we will have arsenic and other contamination in the groundwater. So we can't go in, you know, endlessly deeper and deeper. They've lost a very large proportion of the lakes around Bangalore because nobody woke up in time. In spite of the great IT industry which gives Bangalore this huge population and this huge revenue, they never participated in thinking about the future. Bengaluru is not alone in its predicament at all. The nation's capital, Delhi, is grappling with a deepening water crisis as well. The Yamuna River, a major tributary of the Ganga, that has been flowing down from the Himalayas to Delhi for 30 million years is now a stinking, filthy ghost of its former self. Industrial and sewage pollutants have killed most of the river, while sand mining contractors have a field day. As the city keeps growing and the aquifers are drained out, the capital also faces the threat of zero water in the coming years. About 33 to 35 million people is expected to live in Delhi by 2035. Now the question is, we can't even provide good water services now to Delhi's current customers, which is listen, maybe about 20 million. How we're we going to handle 35 million only in less than 20 years? The Jai Hind settlement, just across the road from the posh Vasant Kunj neighborhood, is a definition of squalor and filth but the 1,200 families who are part of the cheap labour supply chain in the capital have to live with a few buckets filled once every 10 days. 28-year-old Fatima Bibi, resident of the colony who works as a domestic help in the neighbourhood, is used to the regular scramble for water. The India's rivers were once seen as a repository of wealth, a source of livelihood, water and biodiversity. Today, many of these sources of clean water are dying due to widespread pollution. The top government planning agency, Niti Aayog, says India is suffering from the worst water crisis in its history. I can guarantee you a 99.99% probability at least five to six important cities in India will face zero water day because of continued mismanagement.
Professor Sony has been studying the environment and the water systems for many years. And he found out that the floodplains of the numerous rivers in India could provide a solution that hasn't been tried out before anywhere else in the world. These floodplains, interestingly enough, which we found out uh, much later, on an average 100 meters deep of sand. And when you do the experiment, you find that they run for thousands of kilometers. More than one third of this entire volume is water. The Delhi government, with Prof Sony's help, has already implemented a pilot project on the floodplains of the Yamuna that's supplying clean water to more than a million people. And he's confident that the clean water supply can last forever. We are providing perennial water year after year in a very non-invasive way from the floodplain of the river Yamuna for Delhi, for about a million people. But this can actually be a global affair. Whether it is China, whether it is Iraq, the Tigris or the Euphrates, all these countries can have non-invasive schemes to deliver water to all the cities, which are, let's say, something like 3 million people or 4 million people or less, sometimes even more.